Hey guys, this is a Pioneer Town Rosie Boa. This is a yearling male, Het Annery, and uh, his name is Pedro. And today, we're gonna take a break from Taliqua and talk about Rosie Boa Care. Hi, I'm TC Houston, former professional zookeeper, lifelong reptile fanatic, and blue tongue skink breeder. And this is Reptile Mountain TV, evidence-based, captive bred and animal focused. Rosy boas, or Lycanura trivergata, are absolutely amazing, amazing snakes. One of my favorite species, really. Um, they are found in the American Southwest and into Mexico on the western side and into Baja. Now they grow to uh, around a maximum for large females of about 48 inches. Most are going to max out at about 40 to 42 inches for females and about 36 inches or 3 feet for males. So this is a yearling as I sh said earlier and um, they are just usually great great pets. They're usually very placid and calm in demeanor where you can almost pick up a wild one without ever having an issue whatsoever. Um, they rarely they rarely bite. Now you will run into occasional um, rosy that does have a strong re feeding response. So um, usually once they know you're not food they're not going to gnaw on you. Um, I did have one that was convinced that she was going to eat any mammal no matter who it was including me and she would try over and over and over and over again and uh, she actually ate my pinky up to here before I could get her off. Um, that was a Carlson Snow rosy boa and she was absolutely amazing. So uh, as far as cage size and caging goes now, um, I use this, the rule of thumb with snakes of um, the length of the snake, you double it, and that should be the perimeter of the enclosure. And um, the longest part of the enclosure needs to be two-thirds of the length of the snake. For example, if you have a three-foot snake, a, um, you're going to need six foot of perimeter. Now, a 15-gallon works great for a three-foot snake because it's two feet long by one foot wide, and it's a full six-foot perimeter. And then the longest part of the enclosure is two feet, which is two-thirds of the length of the snake. I house my adults um, in the Exoteria medium enclosures, which are actually 24 inches by 18 inches, which allows the animal to be almost about 40 to 42 inches, um, give or take, for the length um, and there's a little bit of wiggle room. You kind of just look at the animal, see if they're cramped, um, and, and go from there. But that seems to be pretty great for an animal. So rosy boas do quite well in 15 gallon aquariums or, um, or 20 long aquariums, which are 30 inches by like either 12 or 10. But either way, that's more than enough space for an adult, uh, rosy boa such as this. Well, this is a yearling, but an adult rosy boa, um, even a female, can do fine in a 20 long. So the main key to keeping rosy boas in captivity is ensure that they got proper ventilation. They don't do well with humidity. Um, you need to keep them dry or at least well ventilated. Um, humid stagnant air is pretty much a guaranteed um, death sentence for these guys. They just don't do well in that scenario. Um, they're from the American scrubland and deserts of the southwest, so they are not really a humid animal. Um, I keep mine on Sani chips, Aspen Sani chips, and it works excellent. I recommend any of the Aspen products that are intended for animals. Those tend to work quite well as long as there's no cedar involved, no pine, that is pure Aspen. Um, Sani chips, again, has been my favorite go-to for these guys. They've, they've thrived, absolutely thrived on it. Um, in the enclosure, as far as heating goes, the hot side needs to be at about 90 to 95, and the cool side at about 70 to 80. I prefer to keep it right at 75 on the cool side um, and 95 on the, the warm side. And if I can find that and everything in between, I know that they have enough thermal regulation to um, do exactly what they need to do to, um, to thrive. Now, uh, as far as water goes, a small water dish can be offered. Some keepers take that water dish out a day before they feed and then um, return it two days after they've been fed. 
because there are is a tendency with some rosy boas to actually drink too much water and cause regurgitation after eating. I've only had that happen with one of my animals ever, so I don't actually do that unless it becomes an issue. I usually just give them a small water bowl dish and uh, make sure it's fresh and clean and leave it in all the time. Now with that one, I did have to take out the water and um, feed the animal and then return it two days later. And obviously if the water is too much and for some reason it's causing a high humidity, then that's gonna be an issue as well. But a small water dish usually doesn't affect it, um, the humidity that much. Uh, I also want to provide them with a hide area. Now I've seen breeders and keepers that have used just like cardboard you know, snack pack boxes that they've got extra snacks or a cereal box, everything all the way up to those commercial type hides that you can buy at the, the local reptile or pet or specialty store. Um, I use uh, ceramic pots. I find that ceramic pots work great and then I just smooth them out and for the entrance and allow the animal to, to hide in the ceramic pot. I also use sometimes PVC, um, half of a PVC pipe. Uh, corrugated piping and it seems to work really nice as well. I can even throw that in the dishwasher to clean it if I ever needed to. Then you just want to give them a couple rocks or um, some sticks that you've uh, sanitized so that they can climb over it and climb through it and it helps in aiding with their shed. As far as feeding goes with these guys, um, it's kind of the rule of thumb that I use with most serpents is to feed them a rodent, a frozen thawed. They usually will take frozen thawed right from birth. These are live bearers because they are an, a boa um, in the boa family. Um, and so uh, right from birth they can take frozen thawed. Sometimes they need maybe one or two live meals um, just to get started, but for the most part they will take a frozen thawed pinky mouse right off the bat, which is awesome. Now I will feed them um, a mouse or a rodent that is uh, pre-killed and frozen thawed about the girth of their thickest part. So this guy gets a, about a fuzzy mouse. Now um, under a year old I'm gonna feed them every five days or so um, depending on how much weight they gr gain or need because um, with everything it's not a magic formula but it's science and art blended so you have to kinda play with the animal kinda get a gauge on what they need. Um, and then at this age at about a year old I'm gonna cut back to every seven days and then once they're an adult, it's maybe every 10 days to two weeks, depending on their weight and how they're doing. Usually I don't go above a hopper. Some adults can take adult mice, but for the most part, a hopper mouse frozen thawed or a couple hopper mice frozen thawed is what an adult rosy boa will consume. One thing I love about rosy boas that we don't get to have with uh, the blue tongue skinks is sexual dimorphism. Um, visually, these guys can be sexed simply by looking for spurs on their little, right on each side of their vent. Um, they're too small on this guy for me to show you on the camera, but uh, adults, or well, males have spurs. Females don't. Makes it really easy to determine the two. There's always an occasional, I have heard of a female having spurs and we know that she's female because she gave birth, but she does have spurs. So there's an occasional time where there's an outlier, but 99% of the time, um, these guys, if they have spurs, they're a little dude. And if they don't, they're a little girl. Um, when they're babies, it's really hard to see the spurs, but as they get older, the spurs are relatively apparent, like they are in large pythons. What's cool is that it's a vestigial part, which is the remnants, uh, evolutionary remnants of um, their legs which is pretty cool and these guys use those in breeding the, the male will like wiggle the little spurs along the side of her tail and that will stimulate the female to kind of get her in the mood kind of like what skinks do when the guy tickles the back of her uh, tail with his back foot so uh, guys as always that's kind of wrapping up the rosy boa care they are so simple and absolutely amazing, totally underrated animals. I mean, you can get these in all kinds of different localities which have different looks and they have different um, uh, 
genetic and visual traits as well. There's snows, two different types of snows. There's anatheristic, there's exanthic. Um, there's two different types of albino, actually three if you are counting the Arizona, the, the Arizona type. Um, and then even actually there's the, they're trying to do this albino triv triv, which is cool too, um, which is a little different. Um, absolutely amazing animals, totally underrated. Um, I guess it's because they're small, but I think these are just amazing little creatures. So, hey guys, thanks for watching. I will catch you on another episode. And don't forget, opinion is not fact. Have a good one.